P.T. Pop here, all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back. And today I'm going to talk about how I can help you make your escape from the call center. I'm going to help you tunnel out of that prison. Stay tuned. Today, this morning, I woke up and I started watching some videos on YouTube, as I do every morning. And I watched another gentleman's videos. And this guy and a bunch of other people on the internet talk about how the sky is falling. Everything's falling apart. The government's out to get you. You know, there's a new world order. There, everything that we've, everything that we've experienced in our life is a false flag event designed to manipulate the public into going, going to war and stuff like that. And as I watch all these videos, I'm not putting them down. And in some cases, I believe what they're saying, but nobody has a solution to it. Everybody just complains and complains and complains, like the government's bad, the president's bad, this is bad, that's bad, but nobody has a solution. And I, I started thinking about my videos about call centers, and I thought, boy, I sit and I complain and I whine about call centers and how they're bad to me and how they're bad to you, and I've talked to people from all over the world that reinforce my opinions that call centers basically suck and are modern-day sweatshops, but I personally have never provided any type of salad or concrete solution to the matter, right? So in this video, I wanted to talk about how I can help you escape from your call center, okay? If you're currently in a, in a call center, I'm going to show you how to start digging out at night when the guards have gone to sleep. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you a spoon, and I'm going to give you all the tools you'll need to tunnel out of the prison you're in and become free again. Now, first and foremost, let me address those people whom I've, who have watched my videos who say they're thinking about taking a call center job. Number one, if you're in a situation in your life right now where you absolutely positively need work and you need an income and you need the health benefits because you have a family, you have you know a baby, you need the health insurance, you have maybe a sick parent you're taking care of, and it's really desperate and you can't find anything else at all, then take the job in the call center, okay? If, if you're destitute, if you're on the, on the brink of being kicked out of your apartment because you can't pay the rent, if you're on the brink of some horrific act like that, then by all means, take the job, embrace it, and do the best you can to keep the job, okay? On the other hand, if you're not in dire need of a job, if you're not in dire need of all the benefits of a job, let's say, for instance, you're like myself, and you're married to a woman who makes a decent living and allows me the luxury of creating videos and gigging with my music and doing photography. If you're living at home with one of your parents and they're not charging you too much rent or any rent, you know, if you're really not too pressed for a job and you're just going to take to have something to do don't take it the only reason to take a call center job in my opinion is is if you're really hurting for money or or if you're in a relationship where where the, the significant other in your life has hit the road and left you with a kid or your other your other partner has lost their job and you don't work go take the job because you need the income but if you don't really need it if you're living at home you know, you just you have something to do, or you're in college. Let's say you're in college, and you say, "Well, I should go to college, go to school. I should go to this, take this job, so I can help pay for pay for school." Maybe, but don't. If the only reason to take a call center job is to absolute is if you absolutely positively have no other choices in life to make money. Now, for those of you who are in a call center job and you have been there for a while, maybe a couple weeks to six months. Here's what you do to help begin your process of escaping, tunneling out. Isn't this great when people do this? Tunneling out, escaping. Bell Fleet or Meister would be proud. The first thing you need to do is start to document everything that you've accomplished on the job since you've gotten there. The positive things you've accomplished. Let's say you've met the metrics for the month of April. Um, you're the top sales rep for two weeks in a row. You got, you've gotten um, 
positive feedback from customers in the customer surveys. Document all those things. Document every good thing you've done, whether you've met the metrics or the talk time. Um, so you th document this so you have something to show a future employer what you've done this job, where you were when you began, and where you ended up when you left. As long as it's positive, keep documentation of it. Keep it running uh, like on your, on your notepad on your computer. Every computer has a notepad. Write it down in bullet form. Copy and paste it into an email and then send it to your home email address. Not to your work email address, send it to your home email address. Okay, So you have documentation at home of all the accomplishments you've made and then update your resume. The first, you should almost immediately update your resume the minute you accept the job at a call center and you're actually working there. It doesn't have to say a lot at first, but as you work there and you, and you gain time, document all the positive things Put them on your resume and make it look and sound as positive and glorious as possible. So a future employer will go, wow, this guy's or this gal really has his shit together. He, he took a job that isn't so great, but he worked hard at it and improved at it. But the first that's the first thing is document, then update your resume. And the third thing you should do is start looking for a new job. Use this new resume with the new information to start looking for a new job. In other words, I'm saying use the call center job as a stepping stone to get you to where you want to go. Now, number four, think about what you really want to do. Especially, it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter if you're young or you're old. Think about all the things you want to accomplish in your life, the dreams you've had, the things you really want to do to make money and have a career in. Now, I did this all the time. I would sit at my desk at the call center and any call center, and, I, and after, you know, after you take your first first call, you're okay, and then the second call, and you're like, oh, and you start getting beaten down by the customers calling you a pickle sucker, and you're like, oh, I oh, another call. I can't take it. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. I'm dying inside. Lord, Jesus. Oh. And then you sit there, and I'd sit there and go, oh, God, if I was only at home. If only I was at home playing my guitar or taking pictures. If only I was painting. If only I was creating. And, uh, but I want to dance, you know. Use those desires and those passions and those visions that you know make you happy to inspire you to get the hell out of Dodge, to get out of that call center. Use your dreams to shoot for something, to aim for something better. Start looking for ways you can make those dreams come true and start working in a field that encompasses your dreams. Like, for instance, myself, I have been an artist since I was a little kid, and I didn't really pursue it, seriously pursue it, until I was in my 40s. And that was when I was working at Verizon Wireless. It actually started, actually, when I was at Wells Fargo Bank Call Center. And my wife and I sat down, and I said, hey, look, I can't do this call center stuff anymore. I just can't do it. It's killing me. It's tearing me apart. And she agreed, and she said, look, when I get to this a place in my career where I can support the two of us, why don't you go back to school, pursue your graphic design degree, pursue your photography, and that's what I did. But I used the oppressive atmosphere, the oppressive atmosphere of the call center to inspire me. It, it it gave me a huge nudge, a kick in the butt to get out and do what I'm supposed to be doing. So use. Use this time to think about what you want, really, really want to be doing and go out and find a way to make that happen so you can find a career where your real skills and your real talents will be taken into consideration and you'll be utilizing on a regular basis. So one thing, fourthly, one thing you've got to consider is if you took this job because somebody said just go out and get a job, you need to be working. You're just laying around the house. You're no good bum. You know, I've heard all those things from my mother and stuff. That was a long time ago. My mother's been gone for a long time now. Uh, for almost 20, what is it, 20, yeah, 26, almost 27 years this next June, she will have been gone. But she, she was always one quickly to say, get up off your ass and get a job, you know. My God. Um, 
And that was when I was in college and high school. So one thing you've got to remember is your parents aren't going to the job. And your, your parents and your grandparents and your brothers and sisters are going to be on your ass constantly saying, hey, go get a job, go get a job. Why don't you just go get a job? We, you've got to live this life for you. okay? And as I said before, unless you're in dire straits and you're in desperate need of money and health insurance and health benefits, you don't need to take a job in a call center just to have a job. You're better off working at Walmart or, or, or Target or something like that. Um, but you've got to live this life for you. Find the dreams that you want. Make those dreams come true. Live your life for you. Don't live it for mom and dad. Don't Just because dad worked at the mill for 30 years and had to retire because he lost a hand in a buzzsaw doesn't mean you've got to be the strong little trooper and go out and do the same thing and get uh, dismembered or something like that. I can tell you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that most of our parents worked at jobs they hated just to put us through college or to keep a roof over our head and food on the table or food over our head and a house on the table, either one. So you've got to live this life for you and for no one else. So make sure you find something you enjoy doing and you're happy doing. Now that being said, I think it's really important that you understand that you can post for a job outside your call center position within the same company, okay? They're gonna say, well, if you just stay six months, if you just stay a year, you can post out for a supervisor position or you can post out and go into another department. That is possible. But they're gonna dangle that in front of you, especially if they catch wind that you're gonna leave. They're gonna dangle that in front of you and they're gonna say, well, don't leave yet. You know, you could post out for that marketing position. Now that is true. There are jobs you can get inside and you can post out, but very few people actually succeed in posting out and, and getting a higher job because a lot of that is dependent upon your degree and your previous experience. Because keep in mind, as a call center employee, you're just one step away from working in the mail room. And I've worked in the mail room. And the people in the mail room I worked with, some for some reason had attitude. I don't know how you work in a mail room of a major corporation and have attitude, but a couple of the people I worked with did and I was like, you know, cool your jets, honey. You work in the mail room, you know. So your position doesn't hold a lot of weight. But you can consider posting out within the same company and getting into another position. But getting promoted or getting moved up within the company is entirely dependent upon your background, your degree. I mean, if you have no background in marketing and you don't have a degree in it, but you're dying to work in the marketing department, the chances of that really happening are very small unless you happen to have connections inside. But look at your options is what I'm saying. Check out what you really want to do. Get your resume updated. Look for jobs internally within that company if you want to stay with that company. You know, um, Don't listen to your parents necessarily or your friends and relatives are just bugging you to get a job. If you don't need a job right away and you're okay where you're at, stay where you're at. The only time you should absolutely positively take a job in a call center is if you're absolutely needed and you're destitute and you're about to lose your home or you're about to, something tra catastrophic is about to happen. Um, another thing to consider is when you're in a call center, you've got to learn to play the game. There I go with these things again, the game. What I mean by the game is there are certain people in the world who if they have a, f a mouthful of shit, you know, they wouldn't even talk about it. So if they had, there's an expression my mother used, he wouldn't say shit if he had a mouthful. So in other words, you're sitting there with a whole bunch of dung in your mouth, you're, and it's gagging you, and it's disgusting, but you won't swear. You're just like poo. In other words, be politically correct at all times. Be positive, be friendly, get to know your boss in the call center. Try the best you can, as much as you can stomach it, go up to him or her and go, hey, nice dress today, Bill, or whatever they happen to be. You know, hey, I love your tattoo, Sally. I always love skulls in my eyelids. So, 
and and make it sincere and try to try your best to make friends in the call center because you can use them as references down the road to get a better job. Now, I, I had befriended a few people, <laughs> but honestly, I'm probably older than most of the people that watch this, and two of my references have kicked the bucket. Literally, they're gone. They've left the planet. And so I, I'm like, well, what do I do now? You know, they were two of my best call center references. So make sure you, you get to know people, go out with you know, employee function, employee functions. Yeah, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? Employee functions. Because in the call centers, the one the common thing I always saw is to, for a team building experience, they like to take everybody bowling, have pizza. I know, I don't like bowling. I can't stand wearing bowling shoes. I don't like bowling. I don't like any of it. I, I just, it's, uh, it's how I feel about it. But I would go. Go bowling with these people. Talk to the boss. Talk to the director. Say, hey, director, director Adolf, how's it going today? I love your the barbed wire you have around your desk. You know, that's great stuff. Make sure you schmooze and you get to know people because you can use them as references. All these things that I'm recommending are tools that you want to keep in your toolbox that will help you make your escape from the prison you're in. they will help you tunnel out with your spoon. So get your resume updated. Document all the things that you've accomplished in the call center since you've been there by sending yourself an email with all those things so you have them at home. Update your resume. Begin looking for another job right away because you don't want to stay there very long. As I said in other videos, if you stay in a call center too long, it's committing career suicide and you won't be able to find anything but career uh, call center jobs. You don't want to work in a more than one call center. Work at one. Use it as a stepping stone to, to advance. Uh, don't live your life for your parents or for your grandparents. Don't feel like you have to be the brave little soldier that goes and works at the mill just because daddy and granddaddy did it. Um, make friends at work the best you can, especially the team leaders, the supervisors and directors. Say hi, compliment them. Make yourself known that you're there, that you're friendly and positive. Don't complain. Don't be um, um, a maverick. Don't complain about the procedures or the metrics. Because all that will do is give them a reason to find a way to move you out of the call center and you'll be out of a job eventually. So there you have it. There's just some uh, basic things I wanted to give everybody as a way of hope to give yourself a way out of the call center work. Um, oh, the last thing I thought of is if they have tuition reimbursement. I'm providing their tuition reimbursement lines up with what you want to do as your dream job. Take advantage of the tuition reimbursement as best you can to go back to school if you want to, to get an education in the area that you'd like to get an area in. Most places will not, like like if you're the company you're working in is banking and you want a job in basket weaving, they won't cover the tuition reimbursement because it doesn't line up with the industry that that company is in. So because they're, they're hoping that you're going to take the tuition reimbursement, get a degree and work for them for the rest of your life which most people don't do. But the tuition reimbursement that some companies offer, they don't offer it till you're there at least six months. Again, they dangle it in front of you. They dangle it and dangle it to try to keep you there. And I've done it where I've stayed at places for a year. And then I wanted to get the tourist tuition reimbursement. But the, another catch is oftentimes the classes you want to take are happening and you can only schedule them during the hours you're supposed to be at work. You know, if you have a class on Monday and Wednesdays from, you know, three to six, chances are you'll be sitting at a desk in a call center. Or you only have Wednesdays off and not Mondays and the company won't work with you. They will absolutely will not give you that time off. But it is another tool you can use to escape from Alcatraz, escape from the call center. So there you have it. Um, I appreciate everybody who's watching. I now have over 1,300 viewers, and I appreciate each and every one of you. I want to thank everyone who purchased my book, Press One for Murder. I sold a few copies, got some tremendous reviews, and I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart from everyone. Um, if you haven't bought my book, it's for sale on Amazon in both ebook and paperback. It's a story about a gentleman who works in a call center, and several of his customers turn up dead. And the local police believe that he has something to do with it. So buy your copy. It's called Press One for Murder. I also have Call Center Survivor t-shirts on teespring.com for sale. 
I have them in a variety of sizes and two colors in white with a black logo and black with a white logo. I think I also have them in hoodie form for you gangsters out there that want to buy it, you know. Just kidding about the gangster part, please reserve your racist saying I'm racist and stuff. Um, and there you have it. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button in the bottom, uh, I think it's right. What's Yeah, over there. Give me the thumbs up, the snooter. Have a good day. Bye.